Welcome to Media Pod Smash number 130, the visually enhanced variety show, which might be an ongoing thing if it works out well, but who knows? We'll see what happens. I mean, it could be a complete train wreck, but that's the thing about doing things. You don't know the outcome until you've done it, and no matter what happens, you're going to grow because you tried, damn it. So don't be afraid, people. Try something new today. So, I'm really excited about this show because we're going to be able to do a lot of things that we can't normally do on the audio-only version, which, you know, will be fun. Um, I've got a list of some segments that I've come up with for today, and um, also, it is halfway to Halloween, sort of. I mean, depending on when you consider Halloween to start. I mean, if you're like me and you start like two months ahead of time, then halfway to Halloween was like a couple months ago. But if you're like most normal people, you know, it's around October when you start really getting into the spooky vibes and we're halfway there, baby. So uh, like Shudder, the streaming service, I'm going to celebrate halfway to Halloween in my own way by, well, geez, I don't know. I think the best way to kick it off would be like maybe a montage or something or just just a quick scene would be cool like editor can we get like a jason busting through the door or something and then maybe like a title like halfway to halloween in big bold lettering oh my god i'd love to i mean nothing but the best for you maybe uh maybe i could add some sound effects in there too or make the title sequence animated uh, add some bomb bursts, you know? Like, I got time. I don't care about going outside. Who cares? It doesn't matter. I, I'm just here to serve you and edit until I can't edit anymore. Okay? Great. I don't know what's up with that guy, but, uh, you know, he's kind of seems like an asshole. I might have to get a different editing guy. Anyways, uh, since we are in the halfway to Halloween, uh, I've decided that it's a great time to announce that I'm doing the 31 days of Halloween yet again. Um, if you might have seen the official video announcement that I posted, but I'll talk a little bit more about it here. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to do it because it, it, was, it, it was pretty exhausting. Like, I'm not going to lie. We... Packed a lot of stuff in there, and a lot of my weekends got filled up with just scrambling to, you know, get everything edited and uh, shot and written out and what have you. But it was fun as hell. I mean, I would, I would love to just maybe keep it as a tradition, which. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I spoke too soon by saying that. (laughs) I kind of immediately regret saying that right now, but that's what editing's for, right? We'll put some stock footage in here and then like, you won't even know I said that. But yeah, so I just think it was a lot of fun looking back and I got to work with a lot of awesome, fun people. We got to I mean, from doing all the recreations of the movies to the game shows to going on the witch hunt out in the trail there in Milwaukee. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff that we did, and I plan on doing it even bigger this year. So hopefully I decided I got an early enough start and uh, we can pull it off and do some really cool things. So looking forward to that and looking forward to hopefully doing a little more documenting of it this year too. So you can kind of get an insight to my process and some behind the scenes looks at what we're doing. So, uh, so now we're going to do a segment, a little halfway to Halloween segment, and we're bringing back everybody's favorite wheel of riffing. Cue the fake audience clapping and cheering and whatnot. Okay, so you may be familiar with the Wheel of Riffing as it appeared around the 80s of Media Pod Smash. I think it was like last spring we shot with it. And it was actually right around halfway to Halloween, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And we most recently used it in PCR, 
in the episode entitled Wheel of Riffing. And it's funny because it turned into the Wheel of Riffing, but that's not actually what it was supposed to be for. Uh, I don't know if there's some re- like real OG people that are listening to this, but know about uh, you know the PCR that we did like a long time ago. But originally, this was supposed to be a movie wheel where we would just write every new release that was in theaters on this wheel and whatever it landed on we had to go see so whether that be chick flick or you know whatever sci-fi action whatever you want it to be or whatever was out rather uh that's what it was so and then we'd have to come back for next week's episode and review what we watched. So it kind of forced, it would force us to go on field trips and it gave us a segment. And thus, that's why actually it was called pop culture roulette in the first place, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because it had, you know, the whole wheel thing going for it, but I don't know, somehow it turned into something else. And there's no, not to say we can't go back to the actual movie wheel, but, you know, we'll see what happens. That's kind of like my famous catchphrase lately is just, we'll see what happens, but it's true. I mean, I just, I couldn't tell you until I get there (laughs) and figure it out. That's kind of, that's life, baby. Anyways, let's, let's get to the wheel. So I'm going to, I got some Halloween topics on the wheel and I'm going to give it maybe like a couple spins this evening and if you recall if you're familiar with it we don't use the purple square uh not squares the purple slices because they're uh pretty hard to see i mean i don't even know why they included a purple on this it's kind of like you could have really picked any other color and it probably would have been fine but you had to pick purple and give a black marker to go with it like come on guys pull your heads out of your asses Mm -hmm. But all right, let's give it a spin and uh, see what we come up with. I seem to be missing. There's like a wood piece that goes in here, though. But that's okay. I mean, we're not going to we don't have to do it exactly by the book. I'll just see what lines up here with the spring and I'll add some fake wheel spinning noises in. (laughs) All right, here we go. First spin. All right, this is a good one. Fantasy Haunted House. So if you've listened to some of the old Halloween shows, you'll know that, you know, we are pretty big on not just Halloween, but haunted houses. And we, you know, we've we've been to quite a few around the area. And I wrote this just because, you know, if I could come up with my own ideal, like I thought about this often. I mean, that should be no shock to anybody, but if I could come up with my own haunted house and I had like an unlimited budget, um, man, there's just so many things, awesome things you could do. Uh, like I know at one point actually in one of the older episodes, I gave uh, kind of a jokey answer about this and it was like a retail, like zombie thing, <laughs> but in all reality, I think what would be really awesome, which I don't think I've seen done. Maybe, uh, it has been, but I know I've never really come across it. Uh, it would be like you start out, uh, going into like this, it's like a house, it's like an old rundown house and, you kind of, I guess the intro would be like, they put like something over your head so that you don't exactly know where you're starting out. And when they finally take it off of you, and this could be solo or you could do it with groups, but it'd probably be a lot more intense solo, obviously. But you start out around like a dinner table with like this family of freaks you know, like uh, Texas Chainsaw, for instance. That's kind of my inspiration here. And you get some really good actors to do this. I mean, you got to get people that are have, have a bit of a resume. Like these are the people that are pulling in the big bucks at the haunted house. These aren't just the people that are throwing a couple chops of a cleaver and maybe screaming. Like these people are going to really give it their all every night and put on a show. So they're just like, their objective is to just freak you out and make you as uncomfortable as possible. And they're, they're setting the stage that like you're, 
the guest that they they found and uh, you somehow stumbled into this situation. They dragged you in and you're like a guest at their dinner table now. And uh, maybe like one of the family members like comes up <laughs> to you and starts doing weird shit, like breathes on you or like blows on you. And of course you're going to have to sign something if you want to be a part of this. I mean, cause it, I've, I'm picturing also, you know, like the blackout haunted house. Maybe you've heard of that one. It's a, I mean, it's kind of like a, art thing at this I, I would think i mean people might consider it that like an experimental art thing i mean you go in solo and they just do it's like david lynch style like house of horrors i mean there's just a lot of uncomfortable things going on if you're curious about like the type of thing that goes on there uh you can actually read a, a walkthrough uh Someone documented it online, so you can check that out if you're really interested. But so uh, there's a little bit of that in in mine. Uh, the family members will make you uncomfortable, and like maybe they'll you know you won't know it, you, but they still actually have uh, the bag that you came in with. Like once they took it off you, and they put, maybe put it back on. Uh, you know, just whatever they can do to make it as crazy and horrific as possible. Then from there, once the whole dinner play is over. Um, there's a let's say like some sort of contraption that opens up and safely slides you from your seated position in the dinner table setting to a dungeon and at this point uh this is where like the real haunted house walkthrough begins because now the whole rest of it is you're just trying to find your way out of this crazy house and it's a labyrinth uh You've got some of the family members down there that are trying to look for you uh, or, like, make sure you're in your dungeon cell or whatever. I don't know, wherever your starting point would be. I mean, how should I know? I'm just the one coming up with the scenario. <laughs> but, you know, you're trying to make your way out, and maybe it's got some escape room elements. Like, you have to come up and figure out clues in a certain amount of time or – Maybe there's certain, like, there's different exits and, like, you get different endings depending on the exit you make it out of. But it's just a really, a full-on experience. Uh, and I would picture it taking, like, you know, maybe 40 minutes to an hour. You know, you I really want people to get their money's worth. And, I mean, the sky is the limit on budget here because it's a fantasy. So why not go big? Uh and yeah, that's kind of the whole thing. That would be my fantasy haunted house. I and mean, obviously all the rooms are going to be different. You'll have like maybe one room is where the corpse of one of the family members is that they just left. And he's just sitting in the middle of the room on a chair. And maybe you don't know if he's going to move or not. Um, and there could be another section where it's just all this weird memorabilia that they got from other victims and I mean, you could really go a lot of places with this, but I should stop while I'm ahead because it, I could go down a road. Maybe you get put on a list. And I don't want that. So that's uh, that's the that's my fantasy haunted house. All right, let's give the wheel of riffing one more spin here because I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm really loving the halfway to Halloween. I got the spooky vibes, and I think you people deserve more. And also because I wrote a bunch of shit, and I want to see it get used. So let's go. And again, we are going to insert some spinning noises because Wheel of Whiffing has gone through a lot of shit lately, and I guess it's not what it used to be. All right, and what do we have here? It is... Well, it's yellow. All right, so TV Halloween. Um, so some of my favorite... Halloween specials uh, or I guess anything I've seen on TV that's Halloween related. I mean, at the moment, I, I'm i thinking some of the better Halloween things I can think of on TV were like when the old 90s sitcoms did it. I mean, Home Improvement is one that pops in my head right away. I mean, they always went all out for their Halloween shows. Uh, like Tim the character on that show, uh, he was definitely obsessed with Halloween. And he, I remember they always did up like, I think 
you know, either the basement or just the whole house in general was always decked out. And they always had like a really cool Halloween episode. Like, um, one that flashes in my head is they did like a haunted house in the basement for one of the episodes. Uh, and then there was another one where like, (laughs) I think Tim or Al saw like this mysterious woman in red, and it ended up being just Jill or something. I don't know. I could be butchering this completely because it has been a while since I've seen that show. But that's I that like is the first thing that comes to head, my head about like TV Halloween because it was such uh, they did it right. I'll just say that. And then more recently, I've been actually just watching uh, like a couple nights ago. I, I've been watching like old montages on YouTube of one Saturday morning and like in my searching for that, I came across uh, something they used to do on Saturdays called scary Saturdays. And I think ABC Disney did it. I, if I recall correctly. And it was like, they would just show a bunch of Halloween cartoons. I mean, not like cartoons made for Halloween, but like cartoons that were on that had Halloween episodes. Uh, so, for instance, in this block of shows, it was uh, it started out with Pepper Ann, which is like, oh my god, what an awesome show! I that was a show that like completely left my mind until I saw it again in rewatching this, and I'm like, holy shit! Like from the theme song to some of the characters, like it was actually a little, it was pretty clever. Uh, I don't know how it escaped me, but as soon as I saw it again, it like all started flooding back to me, and I got all misty thinking about it (laughs) and uh yeah there was a great halloween episode where uh pepper ann and her friend i can't remember his name i want to say it's miles but i could be wrong but uh they have a tradition of going trick-or-treating and this particular year she was feeling a little self-conscious about it so she decided not to do it but her friend was like well what the heck like i still want to do it and uh you kind of, well, you know, the whole lesson is like, don't be afraid to be you. And so like, they eventually go trick or treating spoilers. And, uh, they also come to find out like, well, we as the audience come to find out that all their friends are also trick or treating, but they're all in, in heavy costume or makeup. So you don't know it's them and they didn't know, but those were the same people that were like, Ooh, I wouldn't do that. So it's just, Don't be afraid to embrace the things you love, like Halloween. Uh, And then other shows that were on that block, I think, like, they had a Halloween episode of Recess, and they did a... There was the Halloween episode of Doug, which was the ABC Disneyfied version, which is, like, I don't know. I know some people really hate it. I, I don't mind it so much. I mean, it was very different, but there were some solid episodes in that still. The other cool thing about this was they do like the spooky like interstitials, which here's something. I mean, I have a Halloween marathon tease written on here and I know it didn't land on it, but I will give you a quick tease about what to expect that uh, we've got coming up, which we didn't do in the last marathon. Uh, Speaking of interstitials. So one thing I've always been obsessed with is these interstitials, whether it is like from a TV marathon or like this spooky Saturdays thing. Um, and what I mean by interstitials is like the little quick things that they put in either before or after or in between, uh, an episode that you're watching or, uh, whatever that happens to be on the, the network at the time of the marathon. And like, you know, as an example, one thing I, uh, I've always point to when I talk about this probably is like when they used to do the Friday the 13th, uh, interstitials or marathons the interstitials they'd show were like uh jason running a marathon and like chopping one of the hands off of someone who's trying to give him water uh but back in the day like this was this was awesome like they did this all the time and what i want to do for the 31 days of halloween is once i have the complete 31 days i'll set up a playlist and I want to shoot some of my own interstitials to put in randomly at different times so that if you decide to watch the playlist when it's done, you can, like, get the random interstitials cut in and, like, um, they'll present you the next, like, what's upcoming or, like, here's the next spooky block. 
And that way, if you watch it, you know, on TV, you can leave it in the background as if it's just a network playing a nonstop Halloween marathon. So that would be, that's my goal for this to like add even more to this uh, and a little bit of a tease here for what's to come. So I guess that's it. I guess I rambled enough about TV and teases and other things. So we're going to put the wheel of riffing away, but man, what a good time it was. (laughs) All right. That was certainly a magical segment. You know, we love our wheel of riffing around here, and I'm sure we haven't seen the last of it. But for now, we're going to dive into our next segment, and... That is something I put together earlier uh, that I was inspired to do because people ask me, you know, what goes into some of this stuff and what's it like behind the camera? Uh, What's it like to have a podcasting empire? And I tell them all the time, well, one of these days I'll cut together a studio tour video so you can really see what goes on. And well, here it is. The Media Pod Smashed Studio Tour. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Media Pod Smashed Studio Tour. If you're listening to the audio version of this, I deeply apologize, but I'll try to be as descriptive as possible of things and I guarantee it won't be a very long tour anyways. So I think the best place to start would be right here, the battle station. Uh, This is where I get all my editing done, and it's recently upgraded from a single desk to the classic L shape, which I've been really digging because on one side you get your editing and your business stuff, and then the other side, like you saw during the video today, is a set. So, I mean, it's a very practical setup, even though it does take up a lot of room space. Uh, Also, right here, this is something pretty important here. This is a file cabinet, and uh, it contains a lot of my most important conspiracies. And I know what you're probably thinking. It's not possibly big enough. And that's why I stored the most important conspiracies down in the basement in the secret vault. So, don't you worry about that. Uh, next up, uh, next to me is this soundboard. Now, from first glance, it looks pretty fancy. You know, it's got a lot of bells and whistles, but, uh, in all reality, I found it in the trash and it's actually just a set piece. This is is just an empty shell, but if you can make people think you're professional and just act like it, that's, I mean, that's really all that you need to do this is just all it's all a facade people (laughs) uh also right behind the soundboard is something that i threw in today as a little easter egg for some of the dedicated listeners and viewers and that is my tecmo trophy from the first tecmo at the at the plaza i just want to warn you this is not the only trophy that is going to be in my possession. I'm going for more, so you better watch out. (laughs) For those of you listening at home, it's a trophy with a football on it. Picture a standard trophy that you would buy online. All right, so that's about it for the battle station. Let's uh, head back and I'll show you where uh, the old studio section is. Welcome to the south side of the studio, a.k.a. the old studio section. And the reason I call it that is because this is kind of the area where a lot of the stuff started, and it contains a lot of the old equipment. Uh, For instance, the table that I'm using right now. This table was purchased new when we started up Point Cubed, which would have been back in 2018 and of course that was the podcast that was going to replace pop culture roulette which had been on hiatus for quite some time but for whatever reason it it never really took off i think we did about six episodes and then decided to can it 
Uh, there was a lot of other things going on back in those days, and some of those things uh, are pretty obvious now, but the table remains. And uh, I figured, you know, I had to get this because it was like we were kicking off a new era and we needed a fresh start. So we got the, we retired the poker table, which was uh, another item I got out of the trash. <laughs> I mean, if you listen to the Christmas episode, you, people might have thought I threw that trash line in there as a joke but like legitimately i did get that poker table out from the trash and um i was pretty stoked about it because it was in really good shape and um it was kind of like my way of paying homage to uh one of my favorite podcasts tell them steve dave um and of course they started on a poker table so but we evolved and we got the round one and uh, it took up a lot less space, and I had this vision in my head that we were going to be doing like all these visual things, and we'd need the area, but that, that wouldn't happen for quite some time. But uh, also, what's back here is the um, now iconic, maybe green wall, which has been man. There's been a lot of stuff that's been on this wall. Uh, the game show boards, like every single one of them. Um, my hellish landscape from the beginning of the hell game show. Uh, I'm sure there was some other things, but again, this was like another thing where I got really ambitious. And of course you probably can recognize like what it used to be. It it was actually just a closet in a bedroom and I just took the doors off and uh, painted the walls that green screen color. Uh, and uh, the idea was that like, you know, media pod smash this this whole actually variety show thing that I'm a part of doing like this segment that I'm a part of. Thanks for having me be in your show, me. Uh, it was gonna be a lot like long time ago. That's that was the whole thing. I was gonna like learn how to do the green screen stuff and get it all up there. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I still haven't learned any stuff for, for the green screen. And that's probably why we moved the battle station up further. And this is sort of like the old studio space. But hey, one of these days, it's going to happen. And I'm going to implement this a lot more. Just you wait, people. And lastly, we have a three-tiered shelf, which made an appearance in the Yard documentary and now is just holding some of the most important things in the studio. For instance, it's got some of my note cards. You can never have too many note cards because, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions to ask to contestants. Also, it's got my handy dandy makeup kit from Small Town Zombie Folk, which uh, hasn't been cleaned out since filming days of Small Town Zombie Folk, so it's probably disgusting. So don't open that if you ever come to MPS Studios. Just a heads up. Lastly, uh, well, the current props that we used during this production. Look, he's he's still alive and kicking. All right. And for those of you listening to the audio, it is the sock puppet and the cursed doll. So I am definitely breaking the illusion unless... I'm lying because the doll is listening to me and I'm just trying to play it off as a joke. <laughs> oh, you guys. All right. So anyways, um, that's about all we have back here. Hopefully we will be doing another game show from this area very soon. Uh, I've actually been planning a few things, but this is not the time or the place for teasing new content. So let's go to the last leg of our tour. And lastly, we have the horror wall, my favorite part of the studio, and it was used as a backdrop for a lot of the Halloween content last year, and it's sat kind of tucked away in the back since we ended it, but it will probably soon be coming out of retirement, and uh, I know you probably don't get a lot of chances to see the exact details of what's on here, but... There's some of my most prized possessions. Uh, for instance, this great artwork that my sister made, based that are just all the different horror icons. Here's Freddy. And uh, we actually used the Jason one as their cover photo for the uh, Vamping About Voorhees series, which kind of kicked this whole thing back up in the first place, which is pretty cool. 
Um, and then behind the Freddy picture is actually a signed Nintendo game of Nightmare on Elm Street signed by Robert England, which is pretty freaking cool. And just above that uh, is a signed hockey mask. So we've got some memorabilia. We've got some pops. Uh, it's just a really spooky aesthetic wall. And uh, I feel like every Halloween fan needs a spooky aesthetic wall. So if you don't have one, go get one. Um, all right. Well, I guess uh, that just about takes us to the end of our tour. Hope you guys really got some insight from this and enjoyed taking a look at some of the more intimate areas of the studio and maybe learning a few things. Well, all right, back to you, other me. Hey, we're back. What a magical tour that was. I, I feel like we've really learned a lot. Um, we're just about getting to the end of the show here, but before we go, uh, we have just one last segment and it's something a little special. It's something I like to call word of the day. And to help me out with this segment, I got a special friend, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, come on out. Hey, how are you, man? I'm just swell. Good, good, good. So, all right, we're going to present the word of the day. And uh, in honor of the scripted episode coming out this month, the word of the day is sobriety. What's that mean? Well, Jimmy, it's... uh. You know, it's it's getting clean. Oh, I do that every morning. No, not like that, you goof. It's like, uh, hmm, how can I describe it in terms you'll understand? Oh, oh God! I guess it's Jimmy. Oh my God! I really didn't think that was going to happen. I kind of thought those things were safely locked away. Well, that just about brings us to the end of our show. If anyone would like to purchase a cursed doll, uh, I have a line on one. Maybe a couple. So reach out to me if you're interested. Hope you enjoyed this week's variety show and the visually enhanced experimental thing we've been doing. Uh, maybe it will continue in the future. Who knows? But all I know is that we have a lot of exciting things coming out for you. So stay tuned. Media pod smash off, everybody. <laughs>